G'day, I'm Clive and welcome. <laughs> I'm with Lucy here at the Armadale Reptile Centre in Western Australia. And this here is Byford, the carpet python. That's right, isn't it? It yes. is, yes. <laughs> He's a southwest carpet python. South, get it right, southwest. Southwest, so it's our native python to the Perth metropolitan area. So some of the misconceptions about snakes. So the two that I've come across mostly um, that people have spoken to me about, the biggest one is that um, of a snake chasing them, um, particularly out of anger or um, out of a desire to hurt them. Um, and that's inaccurate, that's not true. So commonly what happens with um, snakes is they go into two responses when they're threatened. Um, they have a flight response or a fight response. Um, more often than not, they'll have the flight response. So that's basically where their biggest desire is to get away. Just escape, get somewhere safe, away from the danger. Um, so this flight response means that they always head towards what's called a refuge. So it's their safe space. Um, Unfortunately, sometimes this safe space, they know where it is. Sometimes it's around the danger or the human being um, and they have to move directly towards the human being to get to their safe space. So for example, when we've done relocations um, and we've let an animal go in its environment that it came from and we'll notice that even though we have it down pointed in a certain direction, it will simply turn straight back around, go through our legs and pop down a mouse hole that was about a metre behind us. They know where their safe spaces are. They know where they can go and they'll be out of the danger. Unfortunately, sometimes it just means that that safe space is around the danger area, which is the human being. So they don't have any malicious intent. It's simply a desire to escape, get away and be safe. Um, the other major misconception that I hear a lot of is um, actually to do with the venomous snakes. Um, and that is that uh, baby snakes, baby venomous snakes in particular, are actually more dangerous than the adults. Um, again, not entirely true. Uh, and that's simply because if you're just looking at a biological perspective, you've got a fully grown adult versus a small little 30 centimeter hatchy. Everything about that 30 centimetre hatchy is going to be smaller than an adult. Their fangs are going to be smaller, their venom sacs are going to be smaller, everything about them is going to be smaller. So a bite from a baby venomous snake, while still can be dangerous, particularly to small children or to pets, um, is at a far less likelihood of actually one piercing your skin, particularly if you're wearing you know, your recommended PPE when you're going bushwalking and things like that. Um, but two, if you don't get close enough to even allow that to happen. Um, so it's, it, it can be difficult for their fangs to break through skin, particularly skin that's highly calloused. So a lot of people have heavy calluses on their hands and when they're gardening, they might get bitten. Um, so it is unlikely that it can get through. And then even if it does get through the yield of venom, so the amount of venom that that baby snake can carry within their body is also significantly lower. Um, so that's not to say that they can't still cause significant physical injury to people yeah, yeah. Um, and to particularly to small children, the elderly and pets. But the notion that they're more dangerous than the adults is, is not entirely correct. Um, they do have a bit of a stronger fight response. Um, as you can imagine being 30 centimetres long when they're first yeah, born they against enjoy. like a six foot human is incredibly intimidating um, as opposed to being a good 1.5 to 2 metre long adult who's been in the world for many years and understands it a little bit better. Yeah. So you're saying about that the... Uh... Oh, I'm trying to saw it went then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah, about, about the, uh, the the biting and the, the, the teeth. I think yes. we spoke about earlier. Yes. About the difference between a, a python. Yeah, a constrictive. Constrictive, yeah. sorry, yeah. yeah. 
and versus a venom. venomous. Yeah. 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 So they do have two very different um, dentitions and, and that does purely reflect how they capture um, their prey. So with your uh, venomous snakes, within Australia, we have two major groups. Um, one of them is called the colubrids um, and they're notorious for being rear fanged. So the fangs are facing backwards sort of thing. Um, and the other one is the elapids. Um, the elapids are front fanged. So they're your very traditional, you know, at the front, you mm -hmm. can see them. Um, we have uh, primarily elapids that people come across in um, not only WA, but the Perth area. Um, so you have your typical front fanged animals. With those animals, the fangs uh, are attached to the venom sacs, which are located in the head. Yeah. Um, and then so similar to a bee sting, it's the action of a bite and then the injection of the venom into the, um, usually into the muscle or to the tissue of the body, not directly into the bloodstream, which many yeah. people believe. Um, whereas, and then that's, they can either hold on, which is very likely, or they also are able to then let go um, the prey then might escape, get away, move along, but um, it's got venom in its body, uh, depending on the yield that it puts in its body and what prey it's had, will depend on how long it takes before that prey, well, basically goes down and dies. Um, and then the, the snake is able to follow the scent trail to find that animal again and collect it back up yeah, and have its dinner. Yeah. Um, whereas pythons, um, they don't have that ability so once they catch their prey, they have to hold on to it. Um, if it escapes from them, well, then they lose their dinner. So that's where the constriction part comes in um, uh, incredibly handy. And they wrap around really, really, really tightly um, and then it can't get away. Um, with their teeth, with pythons, they still have those two front fangs, um, but they also have many, uh, many more teeth in their mouth. So a python actually has over 100 teeth in its mouth. Um, and those teeth come in handy when gripping onto something that may be still moving. Um, but then it's also very handy when they're chewing. So a lot of these fangs um, and these teeth face slightly backwards at the tip. Um, so basically when they're eating, it's hard for something to come backwards and come out its mouth. It's kind of a way to help them drag it down their body. Um, so they do have um, significant differences there but um, it is hard to tell that <laughs> when you're out in the bush and you just see one, you wouldn't be looking at their teeth no, no. to find out. Um, so that's one of the major differences between the venomous and the pythons, yeah. So what other things uh, would you say are the differences between the venomous and non-venomous? Um, a big, big difference is uh, locations. So you'll find that they, whilst you do have reptile eating venomous snakes, um, you also have uh, pythons that will eat venomous snakes as well. So you do have them crossing over with each other quite a lot, but you'll find that their location and the habitat that they um, are involved with can be very, very different. So for example, the carpet python, he lives right up in the tops of the, of the trees. Um, and so he's known as an arboreal animal, whereas um, the vast majority of your venomous snakes, they're down on the ground, hunting within the rocks and the leaf litter and, and things like that. So depending on what they eat as well, um, venomous snakes are quite notorious for um, predating heavily on mammals as well. So that can be a big difference between them, but there's always exceptions to every rule. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, there is a notion about the looks of venomous versus pythons. So a lot of people believe that this triangle shaped head that um, bifids exhibiting is a typical trait of all pythons. Um, whereas venomous snakes have more of a um, main uh, streamlined head with their body um, and it kind of comes into one. That is a generalization. It is shouldn't it, be a rule. Is it the, the black head did? Python? Yeah, so the black-headed python and the woma python, yeah. um, they both have that very streamlined yeah. head into their body. Um, they are reptile eaters, predominantly reptile eaters. Um, and then on the other hand, you also have the uh, death adder who has a very triangle shaped um, yeah, head. Yeah, so so it, it can be a way to distinguish, but it shouldn't be the only way to distinguish. 
The only way to distinguish them and to stay safe is assume everything you come across is a venomous, um, not to touch it, um, but at the same time, not to interfere with it in any way. Um, they all play a very important role in the ecosystem and they do need to be able to do their job. Yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, otherwise it means we may be overrun with mice and rats one day, which is not a good thing. No, no we need more of you to only mates, eh? Okay, what and how should you act around snakes? Around wild snakes in particular, yes. um, yeah. the biggest advice to give is, I know it's very hard sometimes to do, but it is to remain calm and to stay still. So a lot of these animals, they react quite heavily to movement. Um, and even, even just simply the, if you're standing very, very still and you're just moving your mouth, they can still very much see that and can react to that. Yeah. So it is important that you stay very, very still. Um, quite often, if you don't pose a threat to the animal, he'll realize this, he'll then decide, okay, I'm gonna go over here instead and away from you. And then they'll just move on their way, um, sort of thing. The biggest issue comes when people attempt to capture or kill the individual. Um, and that's when the vast majority of bites um, and incidences occur, um, is through um, trying to uh, capture or kill the individual. So you're very much better off leaving it alone and not touching it. Um, and the same goes for pets as well. I know there's a lot of pets out there who see something moving and they want to go yeah, for it. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately when pets get bitten, they can't tell us what's happened. And sometimes they don't show symptoms until significantly after the event when it may be too late. So it's always very important to keep everything just still and quiet and the animal will move off on its own. Um, in the event that you're still a little bit worried that he's, you know, around you um, and you have a very strong desire to get away, um, you can take steps backwards, um, large steps backwards, just slowly and just quietly, and then you can just move off and away. So with snakes, the general rule for them is their striking distance is half of their body length. So if you've got a meter long snake, generally they'll be able to strike about 30 centimetres past their own body um, length. So as long as you're beyond that um, distance, you are safe to just step backwards and move away. Otherwise, it's recommended you just stand still, pose no threat, you're just another big stick or big rock in the environment, <laughs> and then they just move on and go about their day. And I noticed looking at your website here that there's people to help you train your dogs and yes. to uh, stay away from the yeah. snakes and the shingle bats and things. Yeah, there are snake avoidance training courses available. Um, we don't personally know any of them. Um, we have heard of them and we have heard of people um, doing this sort of training and it's worked very, very well. Um, so I'd encourage everyone to, to do their research into it and yep. see what they can find out about it. Um, at the end of the day, the anti-venin for a snake bite for your pet is somewhat over a thousand dollars. It can be quite pricey. So sometimes it's a good idea to be a little bit proactive, especially if you live in a highly bush area. Yeah. Um, it can be a very good idea. Um, and brush up on first aid. Um, even first aid for pets is, is not a bad, bad thing. And um, it could come in handy at a different occasion as well. So. It's never but a bad thing. We'll be doing a video later on about how to um, treat a snake bite if you're out in the bush or in your backyard. So, yeah, that's going to be a, a yeah. good one to, to watch, wait for. Yeah, yeah, and we'll go through all the things, steps you need to do and um, steps that you can do, whether it's to yourself or whether it's to someone else. Um, and um, the biggest, the biggest takeaway from all of it is uh, best not to touch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Best not to interact. Um, there is so many relocators out there nowadays. Um, so many people that do it. Um, you can give them a call. You can call us, and we have a list of all the relocators for the entire WA region. Indeed, so um, we can give it numbers out for all those people. 
um, and they'll come out and they'll give you a hand if they're able to. So there's plenty of people out there. There's no need anymore to, to you know, put him to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's good. no need. No. Oh, thank you for that. You're very welcome. Yeah. So what we are looking at doing is more videos about the individual snakes, the venomous and non-venomous, starting in the area local to Perth and walking down the Bibbulmun track down south and then we'll be slowly spreading our way out, mm. won't we? Mm. So you get a nice variation of snakes, shinglebacks, lizards, we've got different birds. And yeah, yeah, blue tongues. Um, we can even expand a little bit into the species from the wheat belt area if you're interested yeah. or up to the top end and to the north. Um, but we've got plenty, plenty within W, um, within the Perth metro area to keep yeah. us occupied for, a, for quite a while. Um, and um, we'll probably go through some of the animals that are also common pets as well, um, because even though you may not find certain individuals naturally in the Perth metro area, there's a lot of keepers, um, private keepers with these animals. So it's good to be able to identify an animal that doesn't actually belong. Yes. Um, yeah and um, be able to notify the proper authorities about it. <laughs> it's happy down it's here. It's quite comfortable. Yeah. He's probably soaking up the sun, thinking this is a grand old time. Yeah. There's not much sun on you now, is there? Eh? It's soaking no. up the heat up my legs. Okay, so don't forget, hit that like, subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber, and if you are, Again, thank you very much. See you soon. <laughs> he's, he's like, I'll just sit here. Yeah, I'll just chill out. I'll yeah. just relax. Yeah. Okay. Can you feel me stroking?